And I'm actually really excited to try that other Nintendo DS family of system Zelda game again to see if they've implemented any of these improvements I've talked about. It'd also be really sick if they had a train instead of the boat mechanic. No, shut up. Shut up. The train f***ing sucks, dude. I think that guy needs a therapist. Yeah, I don't like the train in Spirit Tracks. If you've ever gone back to public transit after having a car, that's what the train in Spirit Tracks feels like. The train was fun for like 30 seconds until you realize Nintendo introduced traffic as a game mechanic. It might seem fun chugging along, tooting your little horn, but it just ended up being tedious. Being restricted by the tracks themselves and the speed of the train got real old real fast. The boat in both Wind Waker and Phantom Hourglass felt like only maybe 25% of the overall gameplay, just a means to get from one place to another, but Spirit Tracks felt like it was 50% train rides and the rest was on foot gameplay. I'm not gonna lie, I remember liking Spirit Tracks a hell of a lot as a kid, but I really don't understand why. I think I was just in the peak of my Zelda fandom and anything new and Zelda was just amazing. Well, not anymore. Now I'm a cynical adult and everything sucks. The whole adventure felt kind of uninspired, like Nintendo was just going through the motions making another Zelda game. And that's kind of how I felt playing it too. It wasn't an exciting, new, fresh experience. It almost felt like all these scraps left over from Phantom Hourglass were thrown into a new game with a train instead of a boat. The whole note-taking mechanic that I loved from Phantom Hourglass was rarely needed here. Phantom Hourglass also had puzzle after puzzle, and it felt like all of that was replaced by train rides. There was one point I lost my shield and I had to go get a new one. It took me an entire 20 minutes just to leave the temple, go to a shop, buy a shield, and choo-choo along back to the dungeon. 20 minutes. People complain about Wind Waker's boat being slow when it only takes half of that time to get across the entire ocean. They also changed the roll mechanic from drawing a small circle near the edge of the screen in Phantom Hourglass to double tapping in Spirit Tracks. Let me be frank. The double tap roll sucks. I'm not even going to sugarcoat it, 95% of the time you attack by tapping enemies, or at least in my case, I did, and the second you double tap either in a panic or to attack an enemy in quick succession, you end up just rolling instead. This was extremely frustrating when you had a lot of enemies to deal with or specific projectiles you needed to block. At least they fixed the issue with the repetitive Temple of the Ocean King and gave us the Tower of Spirits. Flashback to the start of the game, Link gets a job, Zelda swears him in as a royal train conductor, this guy's an asshole, and Zelda's spirit gets separated from her body. She ends up tagging along with Link, and because of this spirit form of hers in the Temple of Spirits, she can take control of phantoms. This led to some super fun puzzles, and each floor introduced a new type of phantom to try out, making each outing into the tower unique and creative. And you didn't have to repeat any of it. The only problem was Zelda is so slow. She moves at about half the speed of Link and is constantly yelling at you to wait for her. There were also a couple late game boss fights that had you controlling Zelda during the battles as well and they were damn hard. And not a fun challenging hard that leaves you feeling like you need to get good and improve to overcome the obstacle before you, but a not fun, frustrating because there's so much shit to tap and half the time you're just struggling to keep up with what the game needs you to do kind of hard. Trying to keep Link moving and control Zelda was just a little bit much during a fight. Okay, I've been complaining a lot. I'm sure I've got something positive in my notes. No, uh, di no, uh, maybe, no, um, the, no, mm -mm. I have nothing positive in my notes. Let's keep complaining. Every Zelda game has a final dungeon, that much is expected. The final dungeon here was pretty solid, we got a fun to use sand rod, collected the bow of light, classic Zelda stuff, and just when you think it's all over, they throw another dungeon at you. Atop the Tower of Spirits is one final set of floors, and these are by far the worst. Now keep in mind, I was pretty f***ing over this game at this point, but they throw massive room after massive room at you, multi-floor puzzles that require you to backtrack and switch types of phantoms out multiple times. <laughs> There were puzzles so subtle I had to Google the solutions, which never feels good, and it felt like it just dragged on and on. I get the idea, a dungeon that puts all your abilities to the test is neat, but it was just way too much and went on way too long. I just wanted to fight the final boss and never look at a train again. Alright, looks like we're at the final boss, that means no more trains, right? <laughs> oh 
This train section was awful. You had to collect the Tears of Light and basically Pac-Man into the other trains. The looping music drove me nuts. We'll make it stop, make it stop! And if you got hit at all, you had the delight of starting all over again. Make it stop! After resisting the urge to bash my head into the wall and a few more attempts, I finally made it to the next boss. And of course, it's a train. Like I said, I was pretty over it by this point and was mostly just frustrated at all the train nonsense, but thinking back on it, this boss actually wasn't too bad. You zoom alongside the bad guy train, shooting its weak spot, slowing down to get out of the way as it changes tracks, and eventually getting in front of it to shoot its face. If I didn't f***ing hate trains so much at this point, I might have even said it was kind of neat. That's it though, just neat. Finally, after all of that, we're done with the train and we're back to some good old-fashioned sword fighting. Nope, Zelda's here too. Once again, we have to control Zelda in a boss fight, and once again, it's a lot to keep a handle on. The goal is to move Zelda forward and deflect this laser beam, all while defending her from these electric possession jutsu rats. I think the problem with these fights is you don't feel in control. It constantly feels like a scramble to tap, drag, and move your characters along the screen, which ultimately makes it feel sloppy and frustrating. After a little bit of struggle though, I finally made it happen, and we finally moved on to the final final boss. Long story short, Zelda gets her body back, Maladus, which I guess I should mention is the main threat here, possesses this guy, and we end up fighting him. Mom, can we get a Beast Ganon? We have a Beast Ganon at home. Beast Ganon at home. As it turns out, this last boss fight was actually pretty okay, despite the first phase being a huge, huge pain in the ass thanks to the double tap roll mechanic I mentioned, the second phase was actually pretty fun. You basically use Zelda to shoot arrows at Maladus' back and use Link to distract him. You can move Zelda in this fight too, but I found you didn't really need to if you positioned Link correctly. You still had to be quick and time your shots well, and keep your eye on both screens of the DS, but you weren't managing too much all at once, and it actually felt like I was actually in control of this situation, and not just scrambling to tap the screen for my life. And that's it. The day's saved, Link and Zelda hold hands, and it's adorable, and the credits roll. I'm super glad this game ended on a little bit of a high note, but I honestly will never be playing Spirit Tracks again. I'm kind of shocked that I disliked a Zelda game this much. It felt like everything Phantom Hourglass did right, Spirit Tracks just kind of forgot about or abandoned. And yeah, the Tower of the Spirits was better than the Temple of the Ocean King, but that's really the only thing that seemed like an upgrade. Playing Spirit Tracks honestly was rather bland. Phantom Hourglass just did it better, and because of this, I'm dropping Spirit Tracks in the number 16 slot. Alright, I need to wind down a little bit. I'm all worked up from the stupid choo-choo train bullshit. Oh yeah, that's real good. <laughs>